Well, welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. <laughs> you know, we just take top, skim, sand, touch up, take top, skim, sand, touch up, take top, it just goes on and on and on. Now, I, uh, I started, I started wearing overalls, or I'm sorry, these uh, suspenders, because I was having back problems. I don't know why, but 40 years of doing this, I don't know why that gives me back problems, but it does. So I've got back problems now. But I thought, I was thinking maybe it's the belt. Uh, this is nice, I'm gonna make this a little bit longer. But I'm thinking maybe it was the belt that I was wearing. I don't know. But I'm hoping the suspenders help. But I really don't know if they are or not. So I'm boxing these ceilings now. I, this is just a small job. It's only, uh, what do I have, like nine or ten, uh, the 9 or 10 54 inch board and 9 or 10 regular 48, 48 inch board uh, 4 by 12s and, and 4 by 12 by 54. So this is, I think this is close to 20 sheets. Not quite 20 sheets. But so I did take it with the bazooka. I was definitely going to take it with the bazooka. And, I, and I'm going to coat the easy stuff with the hearts, you know, with the box, the ceilings and stuff with the box. A scratch. So hey, whenever you get a scratch, just check your blade. You know, you probably picked up some garbage that the wipe down guy left. Uh, and uh, just check your blade, clean it off, and look at it's all gone now. Um, and what I really like to do when I'm boxing um, is I like to go one way, especially if I'm taping and topping it the same day. It has a tendency to want to blister and bubble a little bit on top of wet tape. But, if I coat one direction, watch, watch this scene. Let me kick this bucket out of my way because it's knocking me on my butt and my feaster here. So, but watch what I'll do. I'll box this scene one direction. One direction here like this. Now, I got a few holidays and stuff, but if you can focus in and see it, those little bubbles right there, okay? So if I go the other direction now, they tend to want to wipe out. So even if I didn't have those holidays and I didn't have that other stuff going on there, and that would have boxed out perfectly, I would have I would have still turned around and boxed it the other way. And boom, boom, chocolate, all gone. Just beautiful, beautiful. That's, this is ready to skim. This is ready for a 12 box. As soon as I dust this out a little bit, it's ready to skim. Now the butt joints, again, are a little bit done. I'll crank the, the number up a little bit. Remember, when it's on five, it's leaving the least amount of mud. When it's on zero, it's leaving the most. I, because of this, uh, the nature of this box, I like to run my butt joints on one. But there's been many boxes where I've got the I've got the, the box wide open, and I'm running the butt joints with the box wide open. Uh, but this but this particular box does a really good job on one. Um, now, somebody asked me about this pigment and mud. Where do I get it? Uh, apparently, you can't get this big man of mud in a lot of areas. Canada seems to be one where you can't get it. So I contacted some friends of mine uh, in USG, and I actually contacted the rep of uh, who supplies the material in Canada, and he says Montreal. Montreal is pretty much the only place that you can get uh, the pigmented plus three. Now. I'm going to show you these, these headers. What I like to do with these headers, uh, I like to put this box on zero. This is a butt joint, and I like to put it on zero, and I like to put it right down the middle. So it covered very well. Here's a header over here too, and I like to, again, I like to run it right down the middle. And, and if the tank shows a little bit, I will, I will float that out later. But truthfully, that's beautiful. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I got to do the walls. So 
I can make this shorter now, and I have the walls to box out. Um, but uh, I do that on the headers because you can't, it's not like a butt joint. It's not like uh, I can stand here like this and look across the ceiling and see this header. Uh, once they put the trim up here and the cabinets are up, you're not going to be able to do this to see if that header is flat or not. You're not going to do this. You're not going to come over here and look at above this to see if these, flat, these headers are, are completely flat or not. You'll see them on the ceilings. You'll see full length butt joints on the wall, but you're not going to see on the headers. So that's why I do the headers that way. Never had a problem, ever. I've never had a complaint, never had a big bulge there where people said, Ray, you're the drywall doctor, look what you did. Shame on you. It's never happened. Before. So, um, but I'm, I'm just boxing this out. Truthfully, I got nothing for the camera guy to do. So, so I told him, grab the camera, let's shoot some video, and let's see what happens. Uh, can you really walk and chew gum at the same time? Can this guy walk and talk and mud while he's talking? That's amazing. How many people can do that? Uh, hey, if uh, uh, the other question I had for all my viewers who are out there, if you know Reba McIntyre, have her get a hold of me and email me because I've had concert tickets to see her three times and I've never gotten the chance to see her. Uh, two times it was work related, and one time uh, it's when she lost her entire her entire family in a plane crash. Which is hey, by the way, I'm sorry, Reba, that that happened. But I had uh, I had tickets for that concert too, and uh, I've never had a chance to see her in person. And and I'm a big Reba McIntyre fan. So well, I'm about to unboxing. I think I have one seam left here. And then I gotta cross all this off. Just because I box this doesn't mean I'm done. So what I have to do now, if I want to skim this, what I have to do now is I have to touch up everything that I just boxed. I just have to cross it off. So I like to, I use the exact same mug that I just had, and these are nine foot ceilings. So I had a double bucket around here someplace. It's right here. And uh and believe it or not, this double bucket is not quite high enough. So I'm going to triple it. I'm going to triple it so I can reach this. This is a little dangerous too because I'm missing some floor here. But now I can get up here and I can reach this, this butt joint relatively easy. And, uh, and I have to cross off all these butt joints. And i got to make it nice and pretty. Uh, and then they'll skim out really easy. So I gotta put the ends, and I gotta make sure this tank. Remember, if you notice, if you remember some of the earlier videos, and if you if you haven't seen them, go back and look at some of the early videos. I talk about wet joints, and I talk about the importance of making sure that the tape is covered right down the center. Well, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm making sure that that tape is covered right down the center. And it's very important too that you lay your knife and make it flat. That's good. This will dust down, this will skim out of the 12 box, it'll be really nice. I also want to make sure that I bring these all the way into the angle because that tape is going all the way into the angle. I have this butt joint here too. Bear with me guys. And uh, so let's get this one done. This is a little bit harder one, and I'll tell you why. It's because I'm not going into the wall. I'm going into another seam. So I gotta make sure both sides are cleaned up really nice. So that's what I'm doing. I had another guy right ask me on a video, how do you keep the mud off of you? How do you not get full of mud? I told him if he finds out to let me know and email me because I got mud all over me all the time. Quite honestly, oops. No, I don't get mud on me. I don't get mud on me at all. 
And when I don't get mud all over me, I purposely put it on me so my wife thinks I've been working all day. So, and uh, if I come home with no mud all over me, she's like, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? I've been working, I've been working, so. All right. Oh, by the way, I have girls I am married, so too bad. <laughs> uh, so I'm just about done with this bike right here. I gotta want to make sure it gets around this box. Okay, how's that? Does that look better? That looks actually like pretty good. That'll work. That'll work. I have one more. It's right here. And this one, I didn't box this little end, but I can just coat this by hand. And also, if you look at this big wall here, this wall is a, a, a just a cluster of patches. Um, I think it's going to be covered with. I think it's going to be covered with cabinet, and uh, so I don't quite remember if uh, if that wall is going to be covered in, in cabinets or not. But I don't care. I get paid to finish it, even if it's behind cabinets, guys. We get paid as tapers to finish the drywall behind the cabinets. Finish the drywall behind the cabinets. I hate it when people change their kitchens around, they pull the cabinets out, and none of the drywall's been finished. And now I have to go in there and finish it because they laid their kitchen out differently, and the drywall's not done. I really hate that when it comes to crown molding. Oh, I, I, I've had people take out the crown molding in their house, and, uh, and it wasn't even taped underneath it. And that's hard. That's, now you've got to go through a house and tape all of the, all the angles that were under the crown molding. That's ridiculous. All right, I got to put all, and I clip all these ends, and then the easy stuff comes, and I can just do the lower stuff. But all these ends got to be clipped. If I don't, they just don't work very well. Uh, when you put, run the angle box, uh, uh, or the mud runner, they just leave a big gap in there. So I just got to make sure all of these angles are clipped. I'm going to do the other side too, I did this side, and that, honestly, that bucket would not have gone, happened and fallen over had they not had the new floor in here. But see, it's, it's not right. Had I just been doing this on the regular hydrogen floor, I can slide it all the way across. It's not going to grab on something and, uh, and mess up. So I've been walking buckets for years. Uh, had to learn how to do that in Arizona. Um, it was too, uh, too hot to put your stilts on. So you had to grab a bucket and go because by the time you got your stilts on, it was all dry. Now where I live now, it's not like that. And so I could box the entire place. And this is still wet enough to where I can cross it up. Okay, we'll take care of the walls. We'll clean up and we'll get out of here. So you guys have a great day. And uh, it's a great summer. I hope we have a great summer in 2017. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you'd like to see any special videos, anything that, any questions that you want to see a video on something, let me know. I'll, I'll tell you what I want to see a video on is me on Naked and Afraid. <laughs> I'd love to go on Naked and Afraid too. Maybe with Reba. You guys have a great day. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's educational. I hope you've learned something. Uh, so if you really like what you see, please subscribe.